Philippians chapter, what did I say? 2 verse 5. Is that what I said? Now, let's start reading here. I want you to pay attention to, there's more than one thing I'm going to mention, but, but the main thing here is, the main thing mentioned here is the crucifixion of Christ. The main thing mentioned here is the crucifixion of Christ. That means one thing. When it's talking, whenever the Bible speaks about the mind of Christ, this is, this is the, the measure, the weight, the determining factor that determines whether somebody has, re, has received and undergone some kind of renewal of the mind by the word and the spirit of God. This is the measure. When they open their mouth, can you hear the cross? Or do you hear something else? Can you hear the New Testament of the cross? Or do you hear something else? Do you, can you hear what was accomplished at Calvary at the price which Jesus paid? Which is such a basic thing. It's not a complicated thing. But you've got to get the truth of what the word saying. If you can hear that, the likelihood that there is some renewal of the mind is pretty good. If you can't hear it, there is an absolute assurance that it hasn't happened. Now let's read and see what it says. Philippians chapter 2, verse 4 and, well, maybe, maybe not. Verse 5. I'm going to read from the King James. Let this mind, if I say, if I say to my wife, let us go and go fishing, she's going to say yes immediately. But if I say to her, uh, let's go hunting, she would most likely say, no. Yes. You can go do that. I ain't going with you. Amen? You understand what I'm saying? When God says, let us have this mind, or Paul says, let us have this mind, he also said in Genesis 1:27, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. So, Man does not have the image and the likeness of God until man is in his image in body, soul, and spirit. I don't reflect God in all areas of my life if I don't think like God. That doesn't take a whole lot of common sense to figure that out. But when he says, let us, he's giving an invitation He's not saying it's a done deal. See, when we read earlier, and he says we have the mind of Christ. Well, we haven't read it. We'll go back there in a minute. But when he says we have the mind of Christ in whatever, 1 Corinthians or whatever it is, it's not necessarily a done deal. It's a done deal in the sense that he paid for it. But it's not a done deal in the sense that we've received it. You understand what I'm saying? He paid for it. You can just as well have it for free. But it doesn't mean it's in your possession. It doesn't mean it's necessarily manifesting. Amen? Jesus paid for the healing of every Christian. Doesn't mean that every Christian's walking around without physical bodily ailments. Amen? So what is, what is the secret? The secret is in what? Receiving. Amen? Does it make sense? Anybody in the house? Shall I give caffeine next Sunday morning before everybody comes in? <laughs> Somebody said amen. <laughs> amen. <laughs> All right. So what, where was I? I was in Philippians, right? 2 verse 5. Let's read. Have this mind yeah. or let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. So where do we become equal with God? Where do we get into God's image God's likeness, God's equal. When God gets to change this box, the thing between my ears, then I can consider myself in God's equal, if you will, God's image, if you will, God's representation. Verse 7. Verse 6, forgive me. Who, although he existed in the form of, 
an unchanging essence of God as one with him, possessing the fullness of all the divine attributes, the entire nature of his deity, did not regard it, for, for, forgive me, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped or asserted. Now the King James would say, and <clears throat> who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Verse 8. Here it comes. And being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto the death, even the death of the cross. So what is the determining factor of the renewal of the mind? The cross. The cross is the lens. It's the sieve. It's the washing. It's the filter through which the mind is renewed. That is what, by which the renewal of the mind comes. What saved you? Let me ask you this question. What saved you? How did you become born again? Jesus, forgive me my sins. Wash me clean. Amen? How do you get healed? By his stripes, we are healed. What is that a representation of? A cross. So, all three areas draws a line right back to the cross. If what comes out of our mouths in terms of belief doesn't draw a line back to the cross, it's not the mind of God. Now, let's go on real quick. Okay, I'm not going to be a whole lot longer. <clears throat> Wherefore God has exalted him, has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every name, that, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven on earth and the things under the earth. So how do we have authority over everything in heaven and in earth? The mind. Yeah. The renewal of the mind. Yeah. In Exodus chapter 33 verse 11... I wrote it down because I didn't study it, so I don't know it. But I can read it, and so can you if you want to. <clears throat> now, some of the stuff I do know, like the word nefesh, which is the word soul in the Old Testament. The word nefesh there means this. It means a mind, a soul. It also means the person. Now, why am I bringing it up? In Exodus thirty-three eleven, the Bible says, and... Moses was the most humble man upon the face of the earth. Now, of course, there was a problem between Moses, Miriam, and Aaron. And God said this to Miriam and Aaron. Moses, my servant, is the most humble man upon the face of the earth. You know? And then he says, I speak to you, Moses, forgive me, Aaron and Miriam, into dreams, visions, and dark sayings. That's Exodus chapter 33. In other words, I speak to you in figurative language. Jesus used to speak to the crowds in parables. Because he said, how can, you, how can I explain to you spiritual things if you don't understand natural things? So he spoke to them in parables. He says this to Miriam and Aaron. God says this. Not Moses. God says this. I speak to you in dreams, visions, riddles, dark sayings. In other words, figurative things. But to my servant Moses, I speak to him. This is in verse 11 of Exodus chapter 33. I speak to Moses, my servant, directly, face to face, as a, me, as a man speaks to his friend. Now that word face there doesn't mean his literal face, God's literal face. Because we know that in the book of Exodus, Moses had to go hide in the cleft of the rock because he couldn't see he couldn't see God or he would die. So it couldn't have been God's natural face, like as in the face of Jesus. It must have meant something different because you understand what I'm saying. So I'm going I'm to read to you in short what one of the definite or a few of the definitions of that word face in Exodus 33. So that you understand what he's saying. So how did he speak to God face to face? Directly as a man speaks to his friend. The, 
the word there in the Hebrew is the word pornim. So in English, we would write it like por, which is a por of an animal, in N-E-E-M. That's how they would pronounce it in Hebrew. That word means, it, it, it can mean presence. It can mean countenance. It can also mean the person. In other words, the thing that represents the person, the actual essence of the person. The word soul also means the person. If you go and check out the word nefesh, the word soul in the, in the Hebrew, it also means the person. In other words, he spoke to him directly. That word soul also means your mind, your thoughts. In other words, he spoke to Moses soul to soul, mind to mind. That's what he was saying. Directly. In other words, there is no separation between the Spirit of God and the mind of Moses. Moses' mind was subjected. It was subject. It was it had God's absolute yes in saying, I agree with what you say. Your opinion is above my opinion. Does that make sense? It's not his opinion. It's God's opinion.